So our output application controls. We're sitting with literally logs and reports. And those are just evidence about whether a control was functioning or not. So ultimately, these controls we would consider are detective. They are there to detect if the initial input control is working or not. Whereas your input controls are there to try and prevent misstatements, alphanumericals trying to prevent you from putting a number where it should be a letter, a sign and a size tick are trying to make sure you put the correct information up front. So those input controls are preventative controls. They're there to prevent a mistake from the start. Whereas your output controls are to detect if those preventative controls have done their job. And so I say to you, there are logs and reports. Literally, a log is a report of all activity that's taken place. So everything that's happened, everything that's been input, I can get a log that shows me the detail. Every control I can get a log to show me if it worked. Because a log attracts everything that's happened in that computer information system. Okay, so ultimately it's a tracker. And we get a whole bunch of different types of logs. So we can get, and very commonly guys, an exception report. And this tells me every time the control didn't work. What control? The input control. So examples. I can get an exception report for limit checks. And it will give me all times that the limit was exceeded in terms of the limit that was required. So, an example in your data cycle, there is a credit limit that we set for the data. And let's say we make it 500 Rand. If they are able to sell to the data in excess of 500 Rand, or sell to him so that his balance is in excess of 500 Rand, that detail would appear on the exception report for the limit check. If the control didn't allow him to exceed the 500, so the limit is working, then it will not appear on the exception report. So exception report is only where there's an exception to the control. It is not working. You can now get exception reports for almost all of your input controls. So exception reports for when your access controls were violated. And it allowed for that. Somebody with the incorrect username or password was able to gain access to an area they shouldn't be. For all of your program checks, where your limits, where your size, where your sign, where your alphanumerical, where your sequence was able to continue out of sequence. So they had source document numbers with missing documents and it allowed them to carry on creating new documents without following the sequence. Screen aids are a little bit different because to get an exception report of where prompt didn't work, it's a little bit harder for us to actually get a report to show that, but we can even say for screen aids, we can get exception reports for something like where a mandatory field was not completed, but they had the asterisk showing there should be a mandatory field. 
or where they were able to add something that was not on the drop down arrow. Okay, but something like a prompt may be a little bit more tricky. A screen format, a little bit more tricky to get an exceptional report of where it doesn't look like the format. So, often guys, when we are dealing with application controls, when you are asked to find program controls within this client system, you would find and discuss the input controls, but then you need to discuss output controls to show where that input control didn't work and where it did. So where it did work, you could just get a log that shows what happened, and in that, it would show you the control is working. But where you want to see specifically if it's not working, so you want to actually iron out the, the controls that aren't working, you will get your exception reports. So guys, an activity report and audit trail are just types of logs. Activity report just specific to one activity. So if you're looking with one specific data, you can get all the activities linked to that specific data instead of having to look at every single sale to every other data that you are auditing. If I want to just get it specific to one thing, I can get an activity report around that one item. An audit trail will show me from start to the finishing of recording a transaction, the entire movement of one item. Okay, so because they are both quite similar in their functions, they are actually just giving us a report of activity. When I discuss output controls, I generally group those activity and order trails together and I will discuss one, get a log, and two, get an exception report. And you, you've grouped the two activity and order trail in the log itself. Okay, so for every input you can now go and discuss an output. And so often what you'll find in a solution, because now a question could be out of 10 and there are eight input controls that are expected in the solution, you will find that UNISA generally limits the output controls to the ones that are crucial in the recording of that balance or transaction according to the assertion that's specific. Okay, so generally now you might get two output controls. But it's really important that in order for you to get your output control marks that you have first discussed the input because the output is testing or detecting where that input control didn't work. So you have to have put these down first to get your output. Otherwise you're going to talk about an exception report for a control you haven't even mentioned or a log for a control you haven't even mentioned. Now remember, your access controls are for the validity of a transaction, the occurrence and authorization. Your program and screen aids are mostly for the accuracy assertion, but both in your program checks and your screen aids, we do have some for completeness. Being our mandatory field, our missing data and our sequence checks. So what I'm saying to you here is look at what you're required is out of when you want to discuss the output controls, the specific log. Which assertion are they dealing with? Because then I want to talk about the logs for access controls and then exception report where access was violated. If they're asking me to audit the occurrence assertion. If they're asking me to audit the accuracy assertion, well then I'm going to go through my program checks, my screen aids, which one do I specifically want to address, and then discuss the output according to those. But like I say, if there's 10 marks for the question, and you've got 8 input controls, don't go put 8 output controls because you're putting 16 marks and you're wasting time. You don't have that time to put extra. If you kept at 10, you want to be trying to put down 10, 11, maybe 12 points and hope that you've got enough to get 10 or close to 10 with those. So what I would do then is I would group logs of all the controls and then exception reports 
where all the input controls didn't work. Instead of going for the specific input control, a password didn't work, a limit didn't work, a um, missing data didn't work, a sign a size, because that is a mark in itself, but I need to first put my inputs and then limit my outputs, because otherwise you're repeating the input control and UNISA aren't going to give you marks to repeat it. Okay, so as we do questions, you'll start to see how you want to structure those output controls, but always to include them unless your required has limited you only to input, in which case I'll only deal with input. But if you are not limited, you must remember how the entire system is going to work. They're going to input. So I'm going to discuss those input controls, but then there will be output controls that help me to see if those input controls did work or didn't. So I need to get those because that will give me more assurance as an auditor whether I can rely on the controls. So above we had these key manual controls and we said that they were still very relevant for the inputs because there was a manual element. Somebody input the data. But then we said the next step was the computer information system took over and there needed to still be those same controls. However, they will be performed by the computer so there will be a change in the name. A change in the way it gets done, but it still needs to achieve the same objective to reduce or eliminate those risks around that transaction or master file amendment. So, we've now looked at all the application controls. Now I want to go and give you a comparison for this is the manual category of control. What would the computer category of control be for that manual one? So the first controls here, segregation of duties and authorization. In a manual environment, you've got different people doing things and you've got more senior people authorizing, signing documents, approving decisions. In the computer information system, how can that still be achieved? Well, your access controls. Username and passwords. So you can assign responsibilities through those username and passwords and say at this point this transaction cannot go any further until someone senior has put in their username and password and authorized that transaction. In this point I need two people to have looked at this function so I need two usernames and passwords that were assigned to the appropriate people to move this process forward. Isolation of responsibility, where somebody has to sign taking responsibility for the action that they should have done, the control they should have done. How can that happen in a computer environment? The same thing, access controls. And then, in your output, the logs will show if the person who was responsible for doing something did it, or if somebody else did it. The log will show. Access controls in a manual environment, while access controls in a computerized environment. The only difference, in a manual, it was generally to your unused source documents. Now it's to the entire information system. Physical access controls are still the exact same in both a manual and computerized environment. Reconciliation. Checking that two things match. Well now, in your computer information system, your screen aids, your program checks, batch controls are reconciling to make sure that things agree. So your program checks, here's the limit. What is the transaction adding up to? Does it exceed the limit? It reconciles the transaction to the limit before it approves it or not. 
it's programmed that this should only be for letters, not numbers. So when you put in a number, it reconciles and says no. When you put in a letter, it reconciles and says yes. It's an alphanumerical. Your screen aids, the format, looks the same as a hard copy format. So it's reconciled to look the same. So your controls for screen aids and program checks are such that they need to be matched before the transaction can go any further. And your good source document design, so there in a manual system you would have it pre-numbered and then the control, you would actually physically sequence check. So in a computerized environment, once again, it's pre-numbered and there is that sequence check as part of your program or edit checks. So I've now gone and looked at my input controls and I've gone and matched them to these manual controls and my output controls, the logs, and matched it to the manual. So guys, also here, add your log for reconciliation. But always remember, there has to still be a manual element when it comes to the log reconciling back to the input. The manual, a person will have to do that to make sure that the input which was outside of the system agrees to the output which came from the system. Okay, so now when you think we are done with all the complicated things of computers, I want to take you into the different types of infrastructure that a company can use for their computers. Okay, and guys, it previously was, record, was included as advanced computer information systems, so the different types of systems that there could be. So I've kept that heading because that will be consistent with what you guys have done prior. But in the standard now, it refers to them as the infrastructure. So guys, these are the different types of infrastructure that a company or client can use as their computer information system.